Hey guys, Mars Singing here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so today, we're going to take a look at the free-to-play uh, tech cooler. Uh, technically, fourth form cooler, but the game just calls him cooler. Um, yeah, got his Easy A. I was quite impressed with his Awakening when we first got it. So I was looking forward to his Easy A. Hopefully, you know, making him into like a good runnable support unit for the LR Cooler team. So we see he is on his 200% leader skill. Um, he has a leader skill for Terrifying Conquerors for 77% or Tech Types for 50. So the leader skill, I mean, typical free to play easy A unit level. Um, not gonna be super useful if you're not, you know, free to play. The super attack is infinitely stacking defense, does supreme damage to the enemy and greatly lowers attack. So, I mean, in events where you can lower attack, it is greatly lowering, it's pretty useful. But obviously the infinite stacking defense is the, uh, the key part of his kit here so he gets attack 150 percent and defense 100 percent from the start then he gets an additional 20 percent uh, defense with each super attack performed up to 50 percent so you have to super three times and then you'll be basically attack and defense 150 percent he gives terrifying conquerors category allies three key and attack and defense 30 percent he also gives uh, allies seven percent crit chance for three turns after the character receives an attack five or more times in battle once only. Which is a very random, like, new mechanic. They've started to add some of these weird things where it's like when a character's been hit or attacked a certain number of times, they do this extra thing, like, once. And uh, his is that he gives everybody crit chance for three turns, but he has to be attacked five times. <laughs> so, yeah, be interesting, I guess. Um... But yeah, we just want to see uh, how he's going to build up. His sticker effect is pretty disappointing. I figured with the um, energy blast thing, like, actually on his hand like that, that would at least have an effect on it. So that is a little bit disappointing. But anyway, we have him on the 200% team. We've got a bunch of supports. We'll probably run the rotations like this where we just have a golden freezer in slot one. We've got Cooler here. He doesn't share a lot of links just with the freezer. But a lot of the other units that are going to be floating into the third spot are going to share uh, links with him. So... Uh, we'll go ahead and see what he's going to look like here on the first turn. This is with no support. Of course, he is a support unit himself. So I think I talked about this when we did the original showcase for him. Obviously, for the purposes of the video, we're going to run him on main rotation. Um, but you're probably going to be using him mostly as a third slot, like floating unit. Yeah, see, type disadvantage even right at the start. Like one super attack, not enough for him to be tanking. Uh, supers, but I mean, it's kind of what we'd expect, right? Infinite stacking units always start off fairly low, especially free to play, because obviously they have lower stats. Um, so yeah, taking a type disadvantage super on turn one is not what you want. So when you think about like what is a runnable support unit, obviously you, uh, you're you probably not going to be bringing this guy on the team uh, to do Red Zone Omega Shenron, right? Because stage one is in, and the final stage is in. So uh, something like this could happen in the first turn, where he's the one that eats a super, and then you probably die. Um, now against Broly, be interesting to see, because obviously the final phase is AGL. Um, by the time you get to like the AOE phase, usually the uh, strategy there is to just double Whis anyway. So you could get your rotations uh, set up nicely for him on the next turn. Um, to be pretty built up by the time you get to uh, AGL Broly. So, be interesting to see, I guess. Um... When we get more buffs, obviously, to the team, like, we've still got the LR banners to come out. I'll probably do some more red zone stuff. Um, I still haven't done a video on the All Types Extreme mission, so... At this point, I could I'd just wait until the uh, Part 2 banners come out, and if I pull Cooler, do a proper 200% Wicked Bloodline team. But, I guess we'll see. Um, but, yeah, this guy... The, que the real question is going to come down to, like, how quickly does he stack up? Because if you are going to run him as a third slot, like, floating support unit, then you're not going to get anywhere near as many stacks. Now, if you're going into an event that is a little bit easier at the beginning, um, you could obviously keep him on rotation, um, stall out the turns. Like, that's the kind of thing I would do. I don't know if I'd even recommend bringing him into that. Uh, that event is, of course, a bit of an outlier. But, like, Cell Max, for example, where the first couple of stages are really, really easy... Um, you would put him, keep him on rotation, keep super attacking with him as much as possible, and then stalling by, like, not super attacking with any of the other stackers. But even in that kind of situation, then by the time you get to, uh, the actual final phase, because he hits so hard, I just, I genuinely don't know if, uh, free-to-play unit is gonna be able to stack up enough 
to do that, even if you have had them on main rotation. So, as a third slot floating support unit, they're probably not going to be commanding a spot on, like, you know, the most optimal team if you are someone that has, like, every, you know, every Wicked Bloodline option available. Um, I don't know if they'd quite make the cut. As a free-to-play unit, obviously, they uh, seem pretty good. Like, even free-to-play numbers were getting... Uh, free-to-play units were getting higher and higher numbers, like, in their passives, like, for stats and everything. So, um... It's always hard for me to rate. <laughs> the last few videos, I mentioned it in the Goku and Gohan one as well, but um, I do, I guess people have pointed out in the comments, but like my perspective on free to play units is not as in depth um, because they are units that pretty much after showcasing them, I never use them because there's very few free to play units that are good enough to be used on like the most optimal teams. Um, and you know, obviously, it is a gacha game. Uh, how stacked up are we now? So we got 300k at the start of the turn with the support from um, Kuliza. Because this rotation, they link up fairly well. They share four links. You get any extra ones from you? You actually don't. So let's see if we put keep him in the first slot here and see how good he can be. Because obviously this is a much easier event. But like, if he can stack up to a level of defense where you could get away with putting him in slot one if you have to, then obviously he could be a useful addition for this team. Um, of course, one thing that still remains to be seen is if uh, the STR cooler is going to get an easy A in part 3, the actual Dokonfest one. Um, because then they'll share a same name before transforming the uh, base cooler as like a support unit for the team. And then of course, once transformed, becomes like a damage dealing machine. With an easy A, like, <laughs> that, that guy's like an auto include on your uh, Wicked Bloodline team. So, uh, these guys, of course, share the same names. So if you're going to use them as a floating support unit, they're not going to link up until the STR one has transformed. So, I don't know. We'll float off the tech one. The tech one actually has more links with the um, free-to-play cooler than uh, the LR one does. So, we'll keep the LR one on this rotation with the freezer. So, they should be able to finish them off this turn. Um, but yeah, that'll be interesting to see if STR Cooler does actually get his easy A in part 3. I know a lot of people feel like it's too early. I think he's, what, like two years old or just over two years old on JP? Um, I can't remember how old in UI Goku was when he got his easy A during the anniversary. But obviously that one was a big surprise because that came way earlier ahead of schedule than we would have expected. So they've done a few things now with LRs, especially like with how late they left it to uh, easy A, the LR, Goku Black and Zamasu. So, it does kind of seem like they are willing to bring Easy A's, like, way ahead of schedule and, like, jump the line, essentially, if it's relevant to the situation, like, the um, celebration that's going on at the time. So, I don't know. That would definitely make, like, the end. I feel like people would be super hyped if uh, the celebration ended with STR Cool again and Easy A, because I wouldn't be surprised. Now, people, you know, people always complain when everything comes out at the moment, but... <laughs> Uh, people have been complaining that the recent Easy A's haven't been as good as they potentially would have liked. So I know some of those people would prefer, like, Cooler's Easy A come a little bit further down the line so it could potentially be more powerful. But, I mean, you never know. Every now and then, these Easy A's just do come out of nowhere that are ridiculously good. I imagine him getting an Easy A in the last part of the celebration and he's, like, hands down the best Easy A to you are in the game. Like... People would be super hyped for that to be the ending of the celebration. So, I mean, it only really hurts this guy. Like, easy A's, you can't use same name units. But, again, like, if you're running him as a floating support, you don't really want a floating support unit that's going to have, like, a linking clash with um, a unit that you're running on main rotation. Because then if you actually want to get links active, you'd have to put the STR cooler in slot one. And I know people would love if after his easy A, he became, like, a slot one mega tank so you could just run him and then have LR cooler in slot two. Um, but they don't usually take units that can't do a, do things like that pre pre easy A and then just kind of completely change their uh, change their whole foundation because he is essentially a support unit that transforms into a damage dealer. So they're not going to change him into being a tank. Whereas obviously this guy, ideally with enough time to stack up, will have decent defense. But considering how far through we are in the event, and we've got him linked up with Kuliza, who is a support unit for extreme wicked bloodline um and he was only up to what 300,000 defense they're on turn eight um obviously you can always get lucky with getting additional super attacks as well uh, which is always key for any stacking unit but when it comes to free to play as they stack up slower you obviously ideally really want to be getting lucky with 
uh, the RNG on your additional um, super attacks. But what are we at here? Because we can put him in slot one again. We've got him in only one attack. We're up to okay. See now we're up to four, <laughs> up to like 500. Okay. Did he double super in the last turn? Or do we have? Yeah, we don't have another support unit on the rotation. Um, yeah, brutal beatdown active from you. What's brutal beatdown do at level 10? Let's double check. That's what I love about being on global because I can just go onto it and look. Uh, oh, it's an extra 15% attack. The thing is, Kuliza can't really be used in slot 1, so <laughs> we'll go ahead and do this. I'll be interested to see what his attack stat is actually going to be. But, again, I feel like that's not really his role on the team. Um, although I suppose, again, not really knowing the full free-to-play team perspective, I guess if you're running like a free-to-play Wicked Bloodline team, he could potentially be one of the better units on there and therefore worth running on rotation. And because free-to-play team, obviously the overall power is weaker, um, the events are going to take slightly longer, so he's going to get more stacks off. So I feel like, I guess if you are running like a full free-to-play Wicked Bloodline team, he could be pretty good. But, I mean, there you go. He does decently well. Um... I feel like he maybe stacks up a little bit too slow to be a third slot support unit in uh, actual difficult content. But let me know what you guys think of the uh, tech cooler down below in the comment section. Will you be using him on your teams? What do you think of his easy A? Uh, let me know down below. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Master Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.